It's an unbelievable turnout. I, I don't know what the estimates are, but I would at least have to put it over six or 700 people, maybe more than that. Turn people away and we're basically going to have a second session. So we thank Central Alberta citizens of Red Deer for taking an interest in this. It, it's, it really doesn't surprise us because healthcare is near and dear to everyone. And it's something that um, we've been hearing a lot from people that we needed to bring this forth. And so it was feel, done. How do you feel about this, that there's, there's so many people here that do care? I, 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 you know, I think that it's amazing that people have showed up. I think that it is not actually surprising the people that showed up because people have experienced these deficits in care. People care that this problem has happened and, and it's really a, a, a long-term problem that has gotten us here. We had an issue where um, we were on a plan in the, in the past and that plan had called for expansion of the Red Deer Regional Hospital with a new tower. We somehow fell off a list of planning and as a result of this, the citizens of Central Alberta don't get the standard of care that they should get. And and a lot of services they have to travel for. Many of these services that are readily available um, to them in central Alberta if the funding was simply put here to put the services here. It's, it's up to the community how they want to go forward but um, you know, but as the MLA for Red Deer North and, and, and Red Deer and surrounding area, uh, I'm, I, I've, I'm here to listen and I'm here to be able to take any of their concerns forward and hopefully we can get some resolution. What is the standard of care here right now? Uh, the standard of care in Red Deer is, is that people get good care for the care that we can deliver. The problem is, is that there are many aspects of care that, that we simply can't deliver that are basics of care today. If you turn the clock back 20 years, those may have been uh, very um, high-end type care, care that could only be delivered in Amberton and Calgary. But the bottom line is, is that many aspects of this care can now be delivered in central Alberta. This is where the population is and we simply don't have those services. Now, um, it's one of these things where we can be part of the solution for Edmonton and Calgary and overcrowding, and that is simply put the services where the patients are in central Alberta. Something that was not mentioned in the report, but at one point it was an estimate that there's at least 30 patients sitting in Edmonton and Calgary hospital beds for services that could be delivered in the close proximity to Red Deer from patients from those areas, but but we, we simply um, uh, you know don't have capacity Capacity. and if we had the actual services beyond that, there is way more patients than that that are sitting in beds in Edmonton and Calgary that could be in, sitting in Red Deer. So what has to happen next then? The, the next step really in all of this is, is has been laid out. We would like a meeting with the Minister of Health to discuss these issues. We feel very strongly that while planning needs to proceed, we really need to see a commitment for the development of the Red Deer Regional Hospital as a, as a referral centre for Central Alberta. Uh, the steps that the public need to take next are really to be engaged, be engaged on social media and our Facebook page, Diagnosis Critical, your Central Alberta Regional Hospital. But as well, we're calling for a public rally on June the 3rd of 2017, the location to be, to be announced that will, that will basically cover these issues and more. And we're also planning to, uh, to form a non-profit society called Friends of Alberta, sorry, pardon me, called Friends of Central Alberta Regional Hospital that will serve to really push this cause forth in the long term. Sounds like this problem has been for a while. So what was the straw that broke the, the, the real final back? straw that broke the camel's back was the AHS document, uh, 2016 planning document that saw the Red Deer Regional Hospital redevelopment fall off the list. Something that we were on the list for before and we simply are not on the list now and the reasons given for us not to be on the list we find unacceptable. We accept that uh, planning will move forth but realistically Red Deer has been through this planning before. Central Alberta has been through this planning before. This time you're not taking about, over Sorry, answer. can you talk about the difference in funding? Yeah, I don't think, I also think that's a fundamental question. We're not taking no. I don't think as people can see by the turnout here today, I don't think the citizens of Central Alberta will take note for an answer here. Yeah, sorry, uh, just once again, can you talk about the difference in funding you guys mentioned in the presentation that $56 million over the last, what was it, 12 years here? The, the funding numbers are, are shocking. I mean, there's different ways of looking at it, but if you look at it in the fairest way, which is per capita funding, we estimate that the per capita funding for new health care infrastructure in central Alberta lags by a quarter to a tenth of the money that has been spent in Edmonton or Calgary per population. You may hear from 
uh, representatives of that reflects the increased acuity of hospitals in Edmonton and Calgary, but it is just simply not true. The Red Deer Regional Hospital's intensive care unit is one of the most acute intensive care units uh, in the entire province, as is seen on provincial data that is real time today. We're the fourth, the fifth busiest hospital by acuity in the entire province, and we are isolated relative to those in Edmonton or Calgary. So the services should be here. That's a bear. I mean, I, I know, like, are people losing their lives? I mean, you guys are doing your best with doctors with what you have. Is it, is it to the point where you guys may be seeing some of that? Well, we know that in cardiac care, that there are clearly worse outcomes with loss of life as a result of not having advanced cardiac services in central zone. There's no question of that. There may be some debate as to the exact number, but here's the issue. If you're going to build more cardiac catheterization labs in the province, why wouldn't you put one in Red Deer where the patients are and, and try to reduce that mortality number? But this is not only true in cardiac catheterization, it's true in multiple other services. Why would you make a patient, as we heard today, travel to Edmonton to get a service when what we need is a lab test in Red Deer to be able to offer that service? And there are countless other examples like that of where people travel for clinics. So if you have inflammatory bowel disease in central Alberta, Crohn's disease, colitis, and you want to be in a multidiscipline clinic where where you have nurses and other healthcare practitioners that specialize in inflammatory bowel disease in addition to having your doctor to get a multidiscipline clinic you have to travel to Edmonton or Calgary to really be part of a fully big integrated clinic. Why should that be the case? The, the specialists are here we just simply haven't been granted the funding to be able to put the clinic in place and this is true across multiple aspects of the hospital. You've also heard of the deficits in surgical space and surgical time uh, that people People have to wait for procedures. There's significant deficits.